some case and its lessons. Let's move on to the next slide. I'll basically uh, give you a bit of a background uh, uh, on the basis of which this whole thing started in Assam, and then talk about the vision document, Assam 2030, we call it, then uh, the strategy document, which is called Assam Agenda 2030, uh, discuss about this very important implementation and monitoring at the state level uh, on the SDGs, and then implementation monitoring at the district and local level, which is also key, and then try and draw a few conclusions and lessons. Okay, next please. Next slide. Dr. Goswami, can I have the next slide? Next. We lost, we lost the presentation. Can we have my presentation back, please, on the screen? Okay. Uh, I don't know why. Actually, we lost. We lost. Shall I, shall I try slide share screen myself? Uh, you can also. Okay, I'm making you host. Okay, I'm making you host. Let's see. Okay. Presenter, presenter. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, Not any issue. What happened to Shutte? Because we made him a host. No, sorry, I I already, I already made Shutte a host. Now I can share the slide. No, share screen. You can, but until yeah, you try to do that if you can. You can share yeah. screen. just it says host disabled participant screen sharing. Yeah. No, I already made Shutte. The host. Let's see what happened. I'm following him. Maybe for internet connection, he dropped all of his sudden. Just a sec. That's the problem. Okay, uh, let me uh, continue verbally instead of wasting the time. Meanwhile, can everyone hear me? Okay, okay. Uh, so let me give you the background a little bit. Uh, yeah. this. Ah. Okay, okay. Is it coming up? Yes. All right. So, as can you please switch off your mics? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Assam uh, was well, one of the. Go back, please, to uh, background. Yeah. So Assam uh, adopted the SDGs in December 2015. Okay, as you know, SDGs were formally adopted by the international community in a UN summit in September 2015, where our Prime Minister also attended. And very soon after, uh, in December, Assam formally adopted through a government order this, the Sustainable Development Goals and said all of its that order states that all development activities in the state will be focused on the sustainable development goals. Okay, that's uh, uh, one of the historic uh, kind of uh, declarations by any government. And uh, it was the first one to be, uh, to be uh, done by any Indian state. And at the launch of this, uh, we had in January, 2nd January, I believe, uh, uh, Dr. Jeffrey Sachs, Professor Jeffrey Sachs was there at the launch, of course, virtually. And he said that it is the first government anywhere in the world which has adopted formally the SDGs. Uh, so we are, uh, we have that very great distinction. Uh, but we, we we quickly followed through with a number of uh, measures. Uh, first of all, a center for the SDGs was established, where I continue to be advisor. 
uh, for this and an implementation structure was developed by the state government very quickly. Now, this happened at a very, uh, in a sense, opportune time because the planning commission had been abolished by the central government at that time. So central planning, India disbanded central planning altogether, uh, which meant that the states did not have, center also, as the states did not have a framework on the basis of which to do planning, but the SDGs came in. So the center has, Niti Aayog also has adopted the SDGs and the states have all adopted the SDGs, so it was very opportune in, in a sense for us, for all of us, the SDGs came in. So that was the background. Okay, next please. Next. Next please. Next slide. Next slide. I think I'm having a, ah, yes, very good. So Assam 2030 is what we call the vision document. Uh, it sets out the basic vision of what we see Assam uh, at in, in 2030. It's one of the uh, sort of states which are pretty large, a 30 million population. Uh, it's not one of the larger states, but one of the smaller states. But nevertheless, it's a large population, 30 million people. I think that's about the population of Australia, right? Uh, and uh, we envisaged uh, a vision, uh, envisaged a vision of and 2030 of wh where we will we want to reach in terms of prosperity, in terms of climate, in terms of all the uh, wonderful things the SDGs talk about. Okay, uh, that was a vision document, and it was not just you know verbal. We established a set of indicators, core indicators, 60 indicators uh, for all the 17 goals, and we had baselines and targets for them. Okay, so it was all done. And uh, most of these were spelt out in the vision document itself. Next, please. Next, yeah. Yeah. So Assam Agenda is a strategy document which was thereafter developed to try and reach that, attain that, that objective, that vision. And uh, it, it uh, as we said, identified in each, what we did was, in order to uh, generate cross-sectoral synergies, the 17 goals were clustered into nine goals, nine, not goals, but broad areas. And these areas, which had tremendous synergies with each other, for example, hunger and, and poverty, okay, that was put into one. The environmental goals were put into one cluster and so on and so forth. And we had, for each of these, we established, uh, we, we kind of identified what are the main, main uh, issues and we tried to resolve them and, and try and find solutions for them. Okay, now this was done in a very participatory manner. Uh, we held a large number of consultations over a period of two years uh, for developing this, and uh, we also developed the the, the concept of backcasting, which is uh, for the resources. So, assuming that everything that we envisage in 2030 will be achieved, what are the resources we must put into play annually? to be able to reach them. So we made a reckoning of the costs. Next. Next. Next, please. Yeah, no, no, before that, go back. Yeah, now the two major assumptions that, were, that came into play. One is in order to reduce the uh, overall requirement of resources, there were two things that needed to be done. One was improve efficiencies. Now, a lot can be done through savings, through efficiency improvements. Uh, for Assam spends more, this, as this graph shows, Assam spends more than many states, yet has uh, much lower outcomes in them. So a more, much more can be done to improve efficiencies. And basically, they, we looked at uh, innovations in organization and, and, and institutions and policies and new technology to drive this process. And also we, we, we envisaged a heavy dependence on partnerships. Uh, for example, tea companies in Assam are very important. And uh, they have, however, been mainly looking at profits and they've not been looking at, at helping the community. And we, we are trying very much, for example, the larger houses like the Tatas and so on, who are very heavily invested in Assam, uh, to invest in the gardens and the surrounding areas to achieve their SDGs. And we've got commitments from them. 
Okay, so oil companies, a huge amount of extraction of oil that is going on. Uh, as you know, before the Bombay High came in, uh, Assam was the main producer of petroleum uh, in the country, historically. And uh, there's a lot of oil that is generated from Assam. And the oil companies also can play a very big role. So we tried to, we have reached, <clears throat> reached out to them and we're expecting them to uh, play a big role. Okay, next. Now, apart from developing a vision and a strategy, what's very critical, of course, is implementation and monitoring. All right, so we have now moved into the implementation phase. And to do that, uh, we are trying to uh, set up a very important, uh, very, very effective monitoring framework. And this com consists of three levels. Level one is monitoring project outputs, the projects that deliver the SDGs, to monitor them very closely and see that they're, they're actually doing their tasks, which they're supposed to do. And finally, monitoring of budgetary resources through the outcome budget. So let me quickly go through each of them. Next. Next, yeah. So state level monitoring level one, <clears throat> we developed, as I mentioned, uh, 60 core indicators to begin with. Uh, and we have set up established baselines and targets for all of them. Uh, and in, in addition to that, we are developing uh, subsidiary disaggregated indicators. And we expect that this the data for this will be generated through, through periodical surveys, large surveys that will be undertaken. The first one, uh, it will be done with the help of UNDP. And uh, this is, uh, if COVID had not intervened, we would have started the process. And uh, this is a very, very detailed kind of survey against you know, 40,000 households. And this will generate a huge amount of data uh, on all aspects disaggregated by, by not only uh, uh, geography, that is by districts and, and, and other subdivisions, but also by communities. Like there are a large number of uh, deprived communities, the scheduled caste, the scheduled tribes, the people who live in uh, River Iron Islands and nearby Chord Islands, as we call them, a uh, lot of uh, hill, hills and so on. So all of these uh, people will be reflected specifically uh, and, and their uh, attainments monitored for the first time. Okay, next. That's level one. Next, we go to level two. Can we move to the next slide, please? Level two is <clears throat> the actual <clears throat> projects which will deliver the SDGs. Now, there are a large number of projects, uh, development projects in the state but about 100 of them, covering about 80% of the, of the state's budget, uh, are, are what we are calling flagship projects, okay? Uh, we can't monitor thousands and thousands of projects, but it's, if you can monitor these 100 or so projects, then we'll be able to do a pretty good job. So we've identified these flagship projects, about 100, and there are two types of monitoring that will be done. Uh, there will be financial indicators in terms of how much resources have been given to them and how much of those resources are spent each year. Uh, the financial indicators, and then the physical indicators, output indicators, in terms of, for example, for roads, uh, kilometers of roads constructed, number of households within one kilometer of all weather roads, number of bridges constructed, and so on, okay? And we see at the end of the year uh, how much of this is achieved, okay? So we develop an annual targets and reporting system and place all this information on a dashboard so that we can quickly have a look and see where we are in all of these projects. So I'll give you, give you a picture of that dashboard. Can we move, move to the next slide, please? Ah, so this is a, a nine projects, as you can see, and there are physical uh, targets and financial targets. And at the end, we make an assessment of how much has been achieved. The red indicates that it has not been achieved at all. Green indicates that they've been achieved. Uh, yellow indicates partial uh, achievement. And you can see uh, each of this in one slide, uh, you know, very quickly, which projects are doing well, which projects are not doing well, and therefore, how much attention should be given to which, okay, focus attention on those which are lagging behind, pull up the people who are responsible, and make a better effort. So this is absolutely key to achieving the SDGs, uh, and this is uh, what we're calling level two output monitoring at the state level. Next, please. Yeah, so the last level is resources level. How much of resources are we putting in the input level, as we call it? Okay, how much resources are going into, finally, the SDGs? So this is done through what we've developed as the outcome budget. 
So each and I, every item of the expenditure budget, budget is mapped to one or the other of the SDGs. And you can see from here, this pie chart, uh, this is a sum budget for 2018 and 19, where each are going. And uh, this gives us a good, a good understanding of, first of all, whether the budget is being spent on the SDGs or not. As you can see, that is okay. Uh, apart from 14%, which is spent on non-developmental expenditures, almost everything else is going towards development and one or other of the 17 SDGs. But if you look at it closely, you'll find that there's some kind of imbalance uh, in the expenditures. And therefore, this kind of uh, exercise helps one to easily identify that. So while there's adequate resources going into SDG 1 uh, and SDG 2 uh, and SDG 4, which is uh, education, you can see the spending on health is very little comparatively. Okay. And if you look at the uh, environmental indicators, 12 to uh, 15, hardly anything is being spent at all, even though Assam is an is a, is a environmentally fragile state, okay, uh, with, with an ecosystem which is, uh, you know, subject to uh, fragility, uh, and hardly anything is being spent. So this enables policymakers to say, okay, we must do a cost correction and, and allocate more resources. So this is a very essential part of this whole exercise. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. So coming from the state level down now to the sub-state level uh, is also very critical, all right? Uh, and Assam has actually made major strides into this. We've developed a district manual which looks at uh, you know, implementing the SDGs at the district and local levels. And with the help of UNICEF, uh, UNICEF gave us uh, support on this. The major steps are, of course, trying to raise awareness at the local levels, making a, a thorough needs assessment that has been conducted at the village level, and what the needs are, capacity building of, of, uh, of officials who do this, uh, this work, very important, and decentralization of authority. Merely talking about it will not do. We have to provide resources and the authority to, to, act, to do this work, and there is a, you know, an act called the Panchayati Act uh, in India. Unfortunately, uh, most of the states have not been able to devolve the, the functions as well as the resources as necessary under the act. And we envisage that by 2030, at least Assam will be able to completely devolve all the, all the uh, functions which are supposed to be devolved to local governments. Uh, as well as resources along with them and, and also develop capacities. All of this is a continuing effort and must be done. Okay. Uh, you have to develop supporting institutions also that has been done and monitoring progress. Uh, so this is all in a sense, uh, if you look at this document, uh, district manual, uh, it has each and every one of these things discussed in great detail and it's being launched and it's being slowly uh, kind of uh, implemented in all the districts of Assam. Next. Next, please. Yeah. So uh, we don't have all the indicators as yet at the district level. It's not been disaggregated so much. But we have 19 in crucial indicators. And we have begun the process of, in a sense, monitoring all the districts and ranking them. And very quickly, you can see, based on these 19 indicators, uh, the green means they are doing well. Uh, the reds means they are doing very badly. The yellow middling okay. The the browns middling not okay. Uh, and then you can immediately see where the resources should be focused. Uh, you can see South uh, uh, Barak Valley uh, is is one of the critical areas. Unfortunately, Dhubri uh, and so on. Uh, these are areas which must be uh, looked, done, uh, looked at more closely, and then the upper Assam is not so badly off, and so on. So this helps us to, in a sense, allocate our resources and our, our efforts towards the critical districts. Okay, next. So that gives a brief overview, uh, very, very brief. Uh, I, I could have continued talking hours and hours on this, but anyhow, uh, let me draw up, up a few conclusions. The Assam experience has had very useful lessons, particularly one, that leadership and ownership are critical at the SDGs to succeed. And we realized that without, we had a lot of support from the chief minister and the chief secretaries and so on, 
and at the initial stages and 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 many chief secretaries have have moved and uh, there is uh, un unfortunately uh, uh, a diversity of interest in the terms of the levels of interest shown by various people and therefore uh, in a sense the, the implementation has flagged uh, has lagged behind certain often uh, and and therefore one of the major lessons is that there must be continued leadership and continued emphasis at the top from the top level for the sdgs to succeed the second is that vision and strategy alone are not sufficient efforts must be made at the implementation level which level we are at and monitoring must be done at, at very critical very critical that this must be done now we've set up uh, a three level monitoring system which i think is unique uh, amongst the states uh, which has many lessons uh, and there must be efficient there must be emphasis on efficiency technology and partnerships and implementation as i as i just presented must be from the from the local level upwards it's very critical that that is done it should not be at the merely at the state level now going ahead finding sufficient resources and continued enthusiasm among leadership is critical for assam's ability to achieve the sdgs okay uh, i mentioned the leadership and ownership is a very critical covid 19 has however added to the challenges in fact right from march onwards of this year it looks like a lost year in terms of uh, uh, development activities uh, we are not being able to uh, staff have been locked down and not been able to uh, function uh, and therefore uh, we are very apprehensive that this might have some impact however what it means is when it opens up we must not only uh, sort of act much more enthusiastically and much more actively but we must do a much better job than we have done so far thank you let me